This is the weekly wrap up presented by the Conversation Project for the week ending September 30, 2023. My name is Jacob Payne. This is simply a wrap up of news stories we posted on the Conversation feeds all week long, Facebook, Twitter, or X. And we talked about most of these throughout the week in our morning updates called Things You Might Have Heard. This is literally the top 10 stories per your engagement that you tell us are the most engaging stories of the week. Plus, for some context, we're going to give you the stories that almost made the list called the Almost Rants, 11 through 15 just not quite top 10 obviously and the further goes the deep how deeply entailed and how engaged you were for the week we give you the story at the very bottom of the list the story with actually no play this week we call it the almost relevant story of the week this one is actually pretty heartwarming for folks who are animal lovers this is number 212 this week 212 distinct different postings throughout the weekend and throughout the week i should say and this weekend we're giving you what were the top stories here go to our website this is a conversation project.com for more details about what we do on the conversation project every single day and email us at the conversation inbox at gmail.com to let us know what we can do better going forward let's get into the countdown for this week starting off at number 10 kind of down casey Kasem style as you will uh keeping the nut stories from 10 to 1 to tell you what stories you told us were the fully most engaging stories of the week and let's kick things off with a um a good one let's say we're gonna go to story number 10 the headline for that one reads, Michael Gabon, veteran actor who played Dumbledore in Harry Potter, Harry, Harry Potter films, dies at age 82. We start off with this one because it's where you said at number 10. And this is a story that a lot of people were very engaged with this week. Uh, a very prolific actor born in Ireland, but of course uh, made famous from British, London, UK type series and TV shows where he was very prolific. And of course, the distinct voice and the beloved actor who played uh, Dumbledore in later in the Harry Potter films. Now, we had a lot of outpourings from people who worked with him across the way and a lot of outpourings from the cast of the Harry Potter films who are now, you know, middle 30s at this point, uh, but talk about how being on set with him as a child and as a younger adult, more or less, uh, was a hoot, was just hilarious because he was always fun, always lively, and kept things going for the young actors as they matured from very young actors to find younger actors going forward. Many people paying the regards for Michael Cabot this week. The story at number nine this week is headline reads, student pilot instructor killed in plane crash during severe storm in Kentucky. We didn't cover this one extensively. This was a top story, of course, for the day. We really did not do much in this one. Local authorities uh, used information from a flight path and pings from one of the pilot's cell phones and the Life 360 Act to find and determine exactly where the search for the plane, which was found um, behind a church that crashed in a storm in Kentucky. The student pilot and instructor were killed in this one. Severe storms over the week happened, over the, the, the week happened for that one, and this is one story that we did not portray very well because other things seem more flashy, but you told me by pure engagement, it's a number nine story for this weekend. At number eight, we go into the world of being petty, literally, by talking about Kenneth Petty. That is Nicki Minaj's husband. His name is actually Kenneth Petty. He was placed in house arrest after threatening offset in a video. He and um, some friends threatened offset in a video that began circulating on social media last week. And because he's on probation, he's under house arrest currently because of the accusations or but basically not so much accusations when you put it out there on film it's kind of there so because of that Nicki Minaj who is married to a guy named Petty of all weird things that it is uh, had to go on house arrest because of the issue will this be resolved uh, fairly easily probably so because in the um, in the, in the grand scheme of things it wasn't all that serious Although when you threaten somebody's life on video and they're kind of famous, it is actually that serious. But in reality, uh, this will probably be something that basically doesn't get covered. In fact, we didn't cover it at all as far as where it stood in The Daily Show. And we'll explain a bit about how The Daily Show goes in a bit. Uh, but in for all purposes, this is one that's going to go away and not something that's going to carry on to do much to get in the way of Nicki Minaj's life or career, except for a small little blurb. It did come in USA Today, so it did get some coverage. Not a lot of coverage. We had, you know, debates and government shutdowns to deal with. This is one that probably should have gotten more coverage, but it didn't, and I'm not sure why. Well, it was because of debates and government shutdown, obviously, but 
Hunter Biden sues Rudy Giuliani over alleged data access violations and computer fraud. This we posted on Wednesday, so we had plenty of time for people to get into this, and they did. The bottom line of this story, very quickly, because it really isn't very much to it, is the fact that Hunter Biden is now suing Rudy Giuliani, specifically, and his businesses, uh, because... Essentially, uh, they pulled the pictures of him not looking so great in off his computer and used them in various different lawsuits and various different promotions, various different things to bring up a case against Hunter Biden and, in a sense, Joe Biden. And Hunter is saying that's an invasion of privacy. Not so much that they found the laptop, which is a whole other thing. Not so much that they might have been actual criminating documents against him in general. But it's mostly essentially the pictures of him, you know, flashing guns, doing coke, being naked, things like that, that he's actually uh, uh, suing for. Also suing a former lawyer of Rudy Giuliani's for covering Judy, Julie in these, Rudy in these things. Uh, it's all sort of insane, all sort of crazy. Hunter Biden is a serious issue and becoming more serious, which may sh show that we we as journalists or people in the world weren't paying much much attention to this. Although we all pretty much uh, agree that he was just a scummy guy that needed to go away. Apparently, he'll have to go away to jail sometime for that one. In the meantime, Rudy Giuliani, who has no money, has another lawsuit to deal with to deal with, with no money to cover of the other ones. Story this week at number six per you. Internet destroys Colorado during their beatdown versus Oregon. Now, there's not much to this. The where we got this from was essentially a little blog post that had people posting Twitter memes about Colorado getting beat up very badly by Oregon last week. Of course, they're playing USC this weekend, and we'll see how well they do to either bounce back or whether they'll actually be exposed. The biggest thing is, of course, they were down 35 to nothing at halftime, so there was plenty of time for jokes. They did not come back, so there was plenty of time for more jokes. The thing that comes out of the story is that Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, is essentially saying, we got beat, we got exposed, we knew we had some issues, he, he was pretty honest about it, and being 3-0 and is great, but what is essentially the black college mecca of football right now had some issues, and if you want to come at Deion Sanders or his players, you better do it right now because it's pretty pretty quickly we're going to shore this thing up and go for it. Whether they do better against USC? Probably. Will they beat them this week? We shall see. But we know uh, once you hit rock bottom, it's all up from here. But we'll see exactly if rock bottom was last week or this weekend for college football. We'll get back to Dion in, in a bit. So hang tight. We'll explain that in a moment as well. But Dion Sanders and the Colorado uh, Buffaloes. We're not quite done with them for the weekend. We are going to the next story, though, and that is another story, another person we're not quite done with, and this Britney Spears. I was able to get a lot of a lot of response off to TikTok for a quick video I did on this one. Britney Spears sparks fan concern after dancing with knives. What was she doing? She was literally on Instagram dancing with knives. She said, oh, no, they're not real knives. But they look like very real knives, and they clanked together as she did this little dance in front of her little dogs doing the thing. And people kind of said, you know, they kind of seem like real knives to me. TMZ reported that Britney Spears is still having some issues. Yes, very much issues. Uh, as she's dealing with all sorts of other issues. She's also supposedly had a fascination with knives from way, way, way back when in, old, in her old younger video days. Um what's going on in Britney Spears's mind we don't know but fans are starting to worry that she may need some sort of assistance not a full conservatorship those are in the news as well but someone may need to intervene on just exactly understanding or, or trying to explain to her how her actions are one freaking people out two not helping her case at number four this week, the headline we had when we posted originally on Saturday, way, way back last Saturday, was WGA and Studio CEOs deal fine deal near finish line, working on fine print. We've had a couple updates on this one, but essentially this was the biggest one because they were right at the cusp. And come came Monday, Tuesday, essentially all was done. They had to write rewrite things in nice, clear language. They had the vote late Tuesday, late Wednesday. It was kind of confusing on when they had the vote. But by Thursday, writers were able to go back to work on various various places. Now, that's the WGA, that's the Writers Guild, the SAG-AFTRA, they still are dealing with their own stuff. The actors have not gotten off their duff yet, if you will, and got some signed. In fact, they're striking against video game makers now. That's a whole other story that didn't hit, get the response here. 
We're talking about the riders who are now back at work. So now that fall season is here and there's a whole lot of weird uh, reality stuff and the Golden Bachelor apparently going to be the big hit of the, of the season because people are apparently all into that thing. We're going to see how things work out. What immediately coming back to work are the Nate Light Data talk shows and the morning talk shows who essentially had more riders than you thought. But the riders and work going back to work fairly quickly. We'll see about the actors coming soon. This may be my favorite story of the week. It's also the most gruesome story of the week. And this is a story where the next three stories are now all pretty graphic. So bear with us. The top three stories, because if it bleeds, it leads. Apparently got all the love for you guys, or the attention, I should say, in engagement. At number three, dead body, 13-foot alligator found in Florida waterway, officials say. That's the headline from Saturday, way back when. A bit update on that one, the dead body was still found, but it was a 14-foot alligator apparently. The remains of the body uh, was found to be recognized as a woman, a local woman, who had many a times been seen uh, trespassing in waterways, in uh, bayous, and places like that. Uh, that happened to deal with alligators, and so it isn't that such a surprise that she may have been attacked and killed or eaten by the alligator. Whether she was attacked and killed by the alligator itself, that part was never really explained, but the remains of the woman found near the alligator was pretty proof that he had he tried to use her for dinner at that point. Whether she whether she was prey or she was already deceased, that part was not really uh, released. The number two story and these next two stories, as I said, are uh, pretty graphic and may need a little intervention. So they're they're dealing with mass attacks, mass gun attacks. Mass gunmen attacks Kosovo police and kill one officer in escalation of tensions with Serbia. You may not be keeping up with this one, but Kosovo and Serbia are having some issues. Um, there are issues in Europe uh, just with kind of unrest between various cultures, various factions, as always have. Uh, but this is an issue that that if you're not really deep in detail into European how politics, European government, how things are working right now, you may not know this. A masked gunman went into an attack and attacked um, inside of a, a, a church and and killed an officer in escalation in the tensions. This is a story that I can't do justice at all. And the next story is going to be more or less the same. But this is one that you will need want to take out and read for yourself in deeper detail. Uh, it's really, really odd how many of these sort of cases are becoming a bigger thing on the national scale. Yes, we complain here in the States about how we have so much and no one else has it and it's kind of a thing and they can kind of laugh at us for that. But what's happening, even though they're not as frequent, they're becoming just as bloody when they do happen, when a person, a singular person, attacks people. And, and we have a you know, sort of a Western sort of culture sort of thought process of, well, this thing's happened in the Arab countries and these things happen all the time with those people, stuff like that. We have to get out of the those people, them people sort of thinking and worry about kind of the overall thinking. And this is one where it's not really a those people, at least not on the initial sense in the Western sense, but it is it's a group of people who are having some sort of beef and are taking it out East Coast, West Coast style, as opposed to going to a bargaining table. We'll see how this plays out. And we'll see what plays out for the number one story of the week. We always give it a little pause and give this story a bit of extra fanfare for the greatness it has of gaining this rank, even though the story itself, not exactly a great story to talk about. This story right here on Thursday, the number one Twitter story, as is mostly the case, the biggest stories are always the Twitter stories or X stories, if you will. It got a response from all the engagement, everyone in the entire week of stories, 212 stories out there. This one pulled 9.92% of the engagement. The story right behind it, 9.89%. So both stories, about 20% together on the storyline. Uh, this one slightly edged out by, by a few engagement points. So it's just that interesting. From the very bottom, though, the story at 212, this story happens to be more engaging by 1,111,119,000, 1, read this prepping, 1,119,000%. 1, that's a lot of ones. That's a lot of zeros. That's a lot of numbers. And so why is it that more engaging? Well, we'll get to that when we get to the almost relevant story of the week. Let's get to the number one story, the most irrelevant story of the week. Headline for that one reads like this. Dutch police say two people are killed in shootings at University Hospital and home in Rotterdam. Just like the story previously, a shooter 
with an intention to kill, um, went into a university hospital and shot up a total of three people uh, going forward. Two people killed in the process. And one, one person was a 14-year-old girl. Another story where this doesn't happen in in the Dutch land very often. This doesn't happen in Denmark very often. So when it does, it's a big deal. Lone gunman wearing a bulletproof vest, open fire in an apartment and a hospital in the Dutch port city of Rotterdam, killing three people, including the 14-year-old girl. Go deeper into detail of the story by going to the website and clicking the link to go deeper. There's not really much to, to really get into from the storyline. It's essentially a wire story with the basic pieces. And since it's so far from local to here, it's really hard to get a beat of what's going on. But this story, the story is the very number one story for the week for this one for your engagement. So with that said, this was a story that you wanted to get into. So that is the truth. Now, what we also have is a secondary podcast of this secondary podcast. This podcast supports the weekly, daily thing we do called Things You Might Have Heard, where we give you new stories from the day to tell you how things are going the day before that you started going forward. This is the top 10 stories from the full week, so you know how everything ran through. What we also present is a podcast called The Story of the Week, and that's a full audio podcast. This, of course, is in video and audio. Uh, we split that up. But the full audio, just a regular commentary from The Story of the Week. Find that in a separate feed and going down the lines. We do that about an hour or so after this is produced, so we can give some time to have them breathe a little bit. And for this week, the top story, based on your engagement and me picking out the story, basically weighing out the other stories, let's see which ones are more interesting and got a big response, is going to be on... On Deion Sanders and the Colorado Buffaloes. Internet destroys Colorado during their beatdown versus Oregon. Now, this is not so much about the game itself. It's really a big chance to talk about Deion and the impact he's having on college football, black college football, and what they are intending to do coming for this weekend. Now, depending on when you listen to it, the game may have already been played, so that part may not be so relevant. It really is about going forward and the part where he says, you want to attack me? I'm down now. Hit me now because we're going forward you're going to have less of a chance. We'll talk about that. The runner-up story, the story we almost talked about that just edged out slightly, is Hunter Biden suing Rudy Johnny over the data access violations. Uh, it's a big deal. It really is a big deal, the fact that Hunter Biden had his rights essentially assaulted as people are assaulting him as a way to get to Joe Biden. It's really kind of, kind of screwed up what's going on. And it's another point in the evolution, de-evolution, de-evolving of Rudy Giuliani as this storage figure. Because even people who still see him as the America's mayor and the guy who cleaned up the streets have to wonder how this dude got to be so low so fast. And how essentially sticking by Donald Trump, who for the most part, at least so far right now, things are bouncing off of. We'll see what these other four indictments do, uh, why it's been so bad for Rudy and the hangers on and not Donald Trump and why Hunter Biden, while kind of a scummy guy, doesn't deserve quite this much. That's where we're going to go with that. Instead, we're talking about Colorado and Coach Prime and how he thinks he's going to pull out this hole and still has a chance to contend Maybe not win anything big, but contend and be in the spotlight and be in the picture. That's what we're talking about in the story of the week. Look for that in a separate feed on your wherever your podcasts are fed to. The weekly wrap up will take a quick break as we have to do some ads. We have to, you know, make a, make a sale. When we come back, we're going to talk about the stories that aren't quite there. The almost rans eleven through fifteen, so to give you some perspective on stories that were close to being what you wanted to talk about. But not quite there, even though many of the stories we actually did talk about within the week for the uh, weekly wrap ups real home, which is things you might have heard. And we'll tell you the story you had no idea that you that even existed because you put no love into it. Story number 212 this week, the almost relevant story of the week. And this is one that actually should mean more to all of us. Usually they do. They should mean more. This is one that if you're an animal lover, animal rights activist, you should have paid more attention to. Maybe we need to. Uh, pay more ads to animal rights activists to watch our stuff. That may be the case. The real case is we're taking a break right now, pausing for a moment to do some commercials. Be right back with more news in mere moments. Let's start off with talk about our 
sponsor for this week. We're highlighting YouTube TV. You can go to our website and click on the sponsors page and see many of our sponsors that we use for our videos, our audios, for the Conversation Project to help keep things going. But this week we're talking about YouTube TV and we're talking about it because just like in the story of the week, we're talking about football. We're just because it's that season, we're talking a lot about football. Believe it or not, we're going to be talking about basketball fairly soon, and it's October. Basically, it's October, and so that means baseball. And you want to get all the sports that you can, and YouTube TV is your best way to get it, especially as you are figuring out it is time to cut the cable. You've got high-speed internet already, so why pay for another large package? You can get a great deal from YouTube TV with three months uh, uh, discounted for your joining in. And if you join through our link, you get an extra 15 bucks off that the title, so check that out. They have the best sports streaming in the nation. They have the one of the best situations you have going on six dvrs six dvrs you got that you can watch it on any device you want to and they are the exclusive home to nfl sunday ticket i know travis kelsey has a lot of pull these days but you can't get all the games unless you're dealing with sunday ticket and the best way to do that is with youtube tv go to our link this is a conversation project.com slash youtube tv this is a conversation project.com slash youtube tv and get in on the deal this is an affiliate link so we get a commission back from you joining in using our link we ask you to check it out give it a try and if you've been looking to cut the cord and a lot of people right now like hey it's way past time youtube tv is the way to go the conversation project lives online at this is the conversation project.com what do we do at the conversation project Every single day, we're providing for you information that you may have missed. We call ourselves your go-to source for supplemental news because we sprinkle in a lot of mainstream stories and we add in some stories from well, well off the beaten path. That alligator eating the woman story, yeah, that one, not exactly something being covered by Anderson Cooper every night. But you had it and you guys apparently really wanted to get into it, so we reported it here. We do this by having what we call the feeds. And the feeds are just our links on Facebook and Twitter. Facebook.com slash this is the conversation project. Twitter or X.com slash TH underscore conversation. 24 hours a day, every 50 minutes, we're posting news stories from various sources. Engage, like, love, hate, share. More engagement you give to them, the more love we see to them. In the mornings on Monday through Friday, we give you the things you might have heard podcast where we'll give you the stories from the previous day. For Monday, it's the full weekend, but for Tuesday through Friday, previous day. Then we give you this here for the weekend, which is the top 10 stories of all from the full week. We just match them up so you see what was really interesting. We also want you to email us at the conversation inbox at gmail.com because we need your feedback for how the show is going. Tell me what's good, what's bad, what's not so good, what's not so bad. It's that simple. Those are things you can do for essentially free, the cheap. You're already paying for your internet access. If you want to help out more, more detailed, more financially, check out any of our sponsors and check out our partnerships page and see if there's a way that we can partner up to work together on this one. We thank you in advance for all the help you can. Uh, the most important things you can do is email the show and, of course, follow the feeds. Oh, share the show and share the shows with other people. And you can also find us by going to our website. We, I know there's way too many calls to action, but we uh, are producing various content in newsletter form and audio form and video form and in snippets on YouTube and TikTok and places like that. So check out other details and things and show your comments. Let's know what you're thinking about things uh, by going to the website. This is a conversation project.com and letting us know what you like about what it is you actually like about us. Thank you in advance. We are back to the news part. And these are the news stories that didn't get a lot of news part to them because they are the almost rants. They are stories 11 through 15 that obviously because we talk about the top 10 most engaged stories, these are not them. But they were pretty close and the margins aren't that far off and just a few other clicks from you folks could have swapped these stories out for some other ones. Let's go into those in detail. Slight detail. We're not go full detail because they aren't the most important stories. This is a story number eleven. You need to go read for yourself or search online for stories. The headline we pulled from USA Today on Wednesday was Mel Tucker fired. MSU football coach out amid a sex harassment scandal. That's the coach from Michigan State University who for weeks we've been posting as they've been saying actions will happen, actions will happen, he shall be fired, they're going to fire him soon, things are going to happen. Officially done. Now his team is still working their, their way to get 
full money and all the stuff from that and to be exonerated as much as possible. But this is a very deep, detailed, and slightly confusing story of what exactly happened. Um, sexual harassment allegations, sexual misconduct harass uh, allegations, they are all over college sports. They're all over sports in general, and so they must be taken seriously. Uh, but the challenges have been going on for quite some time. Damages has been done uh, to Tucker and the university and their businesses and their legacies. Um, check out the, the link we have for discussion. Go deeper into the story or look for it yourself online. Trust me, it's everywhere. And you may not care about Michigan State football, but for right now, it's a big deal for what's in the behind the scenes. This one was a big deal, and it's uh, very, very close to being big enough to talk about in top 10. At number 12 this week, FTC and 17 states sue Amazon, saying the online marketplace abuses its power. It's that simple. The Federal Trade Commission and 17 states are officially taking Amazon to court, or trying to, suing them, accusing the retailer of suffocating competitors and raising costs to both sellers and shoppers. Why does this happen? Well, if you raise the cost for the other sellers, and they're the platform they use to sell, your items cost less and more people will buy them that's competition uh that's that's hampering, hampering competition there if you are raising all prices all along and shoppers are paying more than it should be paying more than retail price more than fair prices then shoppers are being gouged that's an issue right there so amazon essentially being the the big gorilla that controls all marketplaces marketplaces including you know essentially because of the other marketplaces that are are their their competitors having the lower fees and have the bigger reach and being able to essentially touch everyone is having issues. Uh, Amazon is seeing it as a group that is stifling power and stifling innovation for other folks and making things actually cost more, even if they are more convenient. We'll see this play out in court. At number 13, the story headline reads, Chris Caba shooting case drives London police to consider army backup as officers hand in gun licenses. We posted this on Monday and this got a lot of response and we couldn't really cover it very succinctly because debates and shutdowns and Donald Trump, Donald Trump and things like that. So there's a lot of stuff going on here that mixed this up. But we did have a couple of actual updates to the story posted out there for engagement and it got high engagement. The bottom line is the London Metropolitan Police basically are tired of armed officers having issues with people uh, in the public. There are too many shooting cases right now. And of course, London police officers and British police officers known for essentially not carrying weapons. They're all carrying weapons now, many more carrying weapons. And that means more shootings, a lot more shootings. And because of that, many of the officers are just turning over their licenses and saying not carrying a gun. Because of violence and comes because of the reasons why people should have armed responses, the army is considering coming in as backup to officers because they actually have guns. We will see how this plays out. So pay attention to this one. Check out the link for the full details of this story here. And we'll see how this plays out going forward. At number 14, we had a lot of fun with this one. And this one has made its ranks here, but not quite ranking enough to be top 10. Posted on Friday, the 22nd. So this one had a long time to marinate and stick. Uh, Senator Bob Menendez and wife Nadine indicted on bribery charges. The number 14 story for this week. Fairly simple tale, as old as time, song as old as rhyme. Bob Menendez, on his second indictment, one about 10 years ago where he was essentially, charges were dropped. He, I thought he was acquitted. They just dropped the charges for whatever reasons. But he's moved on to other things, bigger, brighter things, apparently. Uh, his house was raided a few months back, and they found $480,000 in cash that's hidden in clothes and in closets and boxes and in safes and stuff like that. Just, uh, you know, wads of cash, like blocks of $100 bills stuffed into pockets of jackets and things like that. Also, finding a luxury car that you couldn't really determine who got who paid for it, although some of his co-defendants are in charge of that. And the big one, stacks of gold bars, like gold bars, which ironically meant gold bars at Costco went off the shelves quick because people think, hey, this guy's got gold. We should get some, too. Bob Menendez says he's innocent, said the cash was, you know, what he's been pulling out for years because you never know what's happening. He's always threatened and uh, he's threatened a lot by the Cuban government because of things like that. The feds say he was using his influence, his spot in Congress to influence how things were going for various contractors from the United States and in Egypt, where he was on a committee to help steer things and kind of keep them in check, but actually was working towards their interest. Hence, gold, cars and money. 
We'll see this one play out in court for both Menendez, his wife, and his two other co-conspirators that are indicted in this whole dealio. And at number 15, Delta CEO says Carrier went too far, quote from him, in Sky Miles changes, promises, modifications after frequent flyer backlash. Don't mess with people's money and their free money. Delta Airlines uh, said had to essentially backtrack because of the modifications that he said were done to the loyalty program. Um, caused some issues. People weren't happy. And people aren't generally happy when they do these things because they get used to getting what they can get. And when you improve things, it's great. But when you make things harder, it's not so great. And people trying to earn money on their miles and money on their flights, especially as flights are just horrific these days, have any reason to, to, to complain about it. Ed Bastian said that they're going to work on it because they went too far. They're going to fix it. We want to remind you before we get to the almost relevant story of the week that we are all over the place. Some of those places include our website. This is the conversation project.com and we're on the email machine. You can find us by typing in the conversation inbox at gmail.com. That's how you can find us. And that's how you can talk to us. We are always looking for feedback, always looking for conversation. If there are stories that you think we missed, we can I can explain to you maybe it was in the range of stories. We, we pick from the top 30 stories from the weekend for Monday and give you 10. Top 15 stories for the day for Tuesday through Friday give you eight. And so some stories get cut off even though they were close. Some of these stories that we had in this countdown today for 1 through 15, we didn't talk about in the Daily Show, but they were in the mix, which is why they're high enough here. We can talk about some of those stories that you think were missed. I can tell you some that actually weren't as close as you thought. Because sometimes we think some one thing is going to be a banger and it doesn't come to pass. It's weird. Also, follow us on our feeds, facebook.com slash this is a conversation project and twitter.com slash th underscore conversation. These things are free to you. You just do those things. Help us keep going. If you go to the feeds and tell us what to talk about, I literally have my script for the weekdays and the weekend show. That's how it works out. You tell me what to talk about and we get it to you here. Now, let's get to the almost relevant story of the week. It was so irrelevant that it was like a million times less responsive than the top story. The top story got 10% of all views this week. This story got essentially zero by all numbers that matter. The, the percentage is so low, it's just ridiculous. What is this headline and why should you care? Headline first for number 212 is Anheuser Bush says it will stop cutting tails off famous Budweiser Clydesdale horses. Did you know that Anheuser Busch was cutting tails off the Clydesdales? They're going to no longer do this to their iconic Clydesdale horses after facing pressure from animal rights activists. The AVMA says horses' tail is useful for fending off flies and biting insects and for displaying mental and, f and physiological states of the horses. So it's kind of bad uh, for a horse who kind of shakes his tail and can't feel anything because it doesn't exist. Uh, PETA and other animal rights organizations sent a letter to Hannah Anderson Bush this month to basically said this is painful to the horses. We don't know because we don't feel it, but you know we think, oh, it's just an appendage that's not not a bone. They think it's painful to the horses and sent letters. Anheuser Bush is going to no longer cut the tails off the clients' tails. Win for the animal activists. Win for all of us in life. Story that you gave literally no run to this weekend. And after we got through that story with no run. The run is over for the week. The weekly wrap-up for the week ending September 30, 2023 is now done. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey and being a part of the family. As we said many times today, follow us on our feeds on Facebook and Twitter, and you can help me do this thing. Give me the stories. Give me the script. Give me the words to talk about for this show. We also want you to stick around via feedwise, if you will. Find us on the further feeds we have for the story of the week. We will talk about Deion Sanders and the Colorado Buffaloes and what they're going to do moving forward after a crushing loss, now going 3-1, and one, which ain't so bad. The teams that they beat weren't bad at all, but now they've been exposed. You've seen them coming. What did they do next? We'll see how they retool and go forward, and I'll tell you a little bit about that with what you know limited football knowledge I have. Also, make sure you're here for Monday, on our Facebook page or our YouTube page or on the Twitter, if you will, for things you might have heard. Six, seven, five fifty a.m. in the morning, we go live Central Time to give you that recording. And then, of course, it's replayed all day long, basically, and get that. So you don't have to get up so early, but you can get the replays throughout the day and get the jump start to the news of the previous day or weekend so you know how things are going. 
I always say stay limber, stay hydrated, and stay on task for all the grand things you're here to do. Uh, it has been a very trying um, trying year for many of us. Uh, if you're following my personal story, we're still dealing with being homeless. We have a home. It's just being rebuilt from a tornado. Those things kind of suck. And other issues that are happening around the world, if you will, and you know the play up to this election, which is getting even more stressful as you look into that one. So uh, take a moment to um, say a prayer for for someone. If you don't pray, you know, wish good wishes and take care of yourself. That's the number one thing you can do. The whole stay limber, stay hydrated is about taking care of yourself so that you are here to do things for other folks who may need you. With that, we need you to be here coming forward, watching our shows, doing the things and engaging in stories. I'm going to wrap up for right now. Thank you for being a part of the family. We will see you in this thing as we count down the stories from 10 to 1 to tell you which stories are most engaging because you told us what they were first. This is the weekly wrap up for the week ending September 30, 2023.